All right. My man Gat Turner always told you, and I've repeated his lyrics time and time again. The hood's a graveyard, straight up cemetery, full of walking corpses that talk obituary. I want you to marinate on that for a minute. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Whatever side of the diaspora that you may be on, north, south, east, or west, let me welcome you, welcome you, welcome you, welcome you once again to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. Okay. I am trying to do this story, um, and I don't want to make it overkill. It can't be, uh, because this is one of the most sickest stories. One of the most sickest. It's not the sickest, but it's pretty much one of the sickest stories I've heard this week, starting off this week, adding to an already traumatic last two weeks, is the young kid by the name of a, a teenager, Kanika Jenkins. And the outrage and the response that I'm hearing on both ends, meaning the people who are saying that they know that these girls didn't do that, and to people who are saying that they know good and well that those girls set them up. Now, I want to start by saying this. The reason why I say the hood is a graveyard is I don't want to speak for no other community but the only community I've seen, I've grown up, and I've once been a part of, right? On some, on every level. There's a subculture that operates, and nobody don't want to talk about it because it's too sick. It's too sick. So I'm going to bring this to my own family. Bring this to my own home. Make it personal. Because I got a personal. So y'all know I'm full of. So I'm going to give you this. And I'm going to tell you in advance. I hope that I'm able to express myself. Without emotionally getting overwhelmed. Because I can just imagine something like this happening to my child. Um, and only because girls... Are more likely. I mean, I don't want to make this a gender issue, but girls are a lot likely to set a girl that they're jealous of up on the auspices or the pretenses that their their friend. Um, if the girl thinks she's cute, this is all sick ghetto behavior. I'm going to beat you up. I'm going to cut your face with a box cutter because all the boys like you. Um, I'm, I can take some money from somebody and if they want to rape you, I'll let you use my house as long as you give me some dope. As long as you give me a few dollars. Shit, it can go down. It can happen. Yeah. Okay. Now, when I say I've been a, a part of it, I don't mean literally. I mean figuratively. Because these stories are not nothing new. And I don't like the fact that we are not being honest enough in our communities to talk about this shit and then deal with the element in our community that's doing this kind of stuff. So in some cases, we are going to have to eat our young. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. We don't want to deal with that. I get it. Some of our children have no empathy. Some of our children are totally disconnected from life, from people, from feelings. 
and even from themselves because their mother might have been chasing the crack pipe. The stage where the baby in child development needs to feel secure, that needs to feel attached to something. We pluck a cold bottle in his mouth instead of letting the baby suckle from the mother. We will allow the baby to roll off the couch and be like, damn, I was so high last night. <laughs> the baby rolled off the couch. <laughs> and I, girl, I didn't even know it. Not thinking that if that happens enough, do you think that baby is going to trust anybody in his life ever if he grows up? Do you know what you are producing? You know the kind of monsters that we are producing in this society? And I'm speaking to black people right now more specifically because guess what? I always say the dominant group, they have a working class system. Yes, they do. They have a higher class, uh, middle class, maybe albeit small, um, and they have a lower class white people, and then they have their trail trash. Okay? Black people are not even given that option. We're not even given the class system. We all together. We all lumped in one group. Because if I'm a black doctor and if I'm driving down the street, and I will always not only be su subjected to the residue of white supremacy by virtue of the color of my skin, so which already puts me on the lookout, which already just keeps me in level with the base head. It's the same across the board. So when we start talking about our community, and I'm going to tie this all in. I know y'all probably saying, get to the point. Yeah, I'm coming. Let me say one damn thing to you. I remember when my sister used to get high with these folks, right? And they used to, um, one time I got a call from my homeboy, who I grew up with, right? And he knew me, but he was a, and I don't want to mention his name right now. I mean, he's done time in federal pen. He came out and he's done it again. And, you know, there's no 401k plan and hustling. But at one time, this guy was a, a bona fide runner. I just say, and he pretty much ran my town. He was one of the big boys. And because my sister was so cute, you know, she was the kind of young lady that could move in all types of circles. All types of circles and be and welcome. In fact, people would take her. You know, she would meet people and they would take her to all kinds of circles. Because y'all know what it is with the uh, beauty. So, you know, and which is a lot of times a woman's downfall if she's cute and she don't have her head on straight. Okay, and that's what my sister became a victim of. So there was all these girls that was jealous of her, and then they knew that my sister had owed a few uh, runners money. And um, a lot of money, in fact. One person that was scheming all the little runners out of money, and she probably should have been dead. So they set her up, and she was over this club. They had her tied up. They start cutting their hair out. These are her, her, her friends, her so-called best friend now is who set this up, is the one who got my sister to go over there with her in the first place. All right? So don't you hear me. Uh, So as my sister got in there, when she realized there was a few of these guys that she had burnt and took some money from, she already knew what time it was. And she probably thought she was going to lose her life, but she didn't at that point. They broke bottles. They assaulted her with them. She was bleeding from head to toe. They didn't mess up her face. It's really, really weird. They just did a lot of inhumane things to her. And um, somehow, 
the person that I, I'm aware of that I grew up with wanted to see and wanted to know who this little chick was that ran through all his workers like that. So he decided to come down himself and go to the club and go to their dungeon area where they do their work, their dirty work. And um, when he got there, he recognized my sister. He recognized who she was. And he froze because every, anybody that knows street life, I mean, you can't just let somebody burn you from your money and then just leave them standing, leave them hanging and not try to set an example to anybody else that has that particular idea. And he didn't want to seem soft or appear soft. But what he did was he was in shock because not only did he know me, and I was singing around here. He knew my brothers. He played basketball with a few of them. He knew us. He knew us on the level where he respected us. Even with our faults and ills. And we grew up with him. And he told the guys to cut her loose. And they was like, what? He said, cut her loose. And it was like, you know, why, you know, what, what's up with that? But in the meantime, when they cut her loose, I guess he was figuring out what he was going to do with them. But before he did that, he made the phone, he made a phone call. And he made a phone call and he said, I got your sister here. And um, they want to kill her. But I'm not going to let her. I'm not going to let her die. He said, but your sister is out here real bad. And she's doing a lot of bad things. And she's being responsible for a lot of money and a lot of product coming up missing. He said, but I'm going I'm to cut her loose. Because I know y'all. He said, but y'all need to get her out of town. Y'all need to do something with her. He said, because she's going to end up dead. He said, it could have been today. I thanked him for that. My brothers thanked him. When got my sister, picked her up. And, um. She survived another day. But when you ask me, will black chicks set up, set up black chicks? Oh, I got another one who friends set, them, set her up and told her to come to the barbecue joint. And she came down because she thought they was going to see some uh, guys, I guess, that they liked. And the girls that called her down there, they called about four girls that they knew, they knew hated her guts. And when they all got together, guess what happened? They stabbed her in the forehead. Fortunately, she didn't die. Teenagers. So if anybody that's saying girls are incapable of doing this kind of shit, I'm like, everything I think that happened in my generation happened now on a scale of about 500. So the fact that I saw something... And I'm going to give a shout out to, um, who was it, Drive-By TV, I believe it was, who took an audio and enhanced, he must have been a, um, a geek, audio geek, because what he did was he enhanced the, uh, uh, um, the audio. And you can hear the, one of the girls saying something, they stupid, they back there raping her. They're back there raping her. You can clearly hear it. And you can clearly hear one of the friends saying, I told y'all. I told y'all. Okay. 
Then on another video that her friend says that her friend lied, the friend allegedly sent a private message, which is this Monifa Shelton girl from her Facebook page, sent a letter to a private message. I'm sorry, I said letter. A private message to one of her girlfriends and all while she was on her Facebook acting like she was missing her sister. Well, you know, and she didn't know what happened to her and please come home. Everybody, well, all this kind of yada, yada, yada. Allegedly, this private message, that's right there. Y'all can go there, right there to drive by TV. So I'm going to give you a shout out. I thought that was some very good work that you did. The police either don't give a damn, which they probably don't. You know, because you know they're not that insubordinate. They're not, they're not keystone cops like that. They don't give they don't give two shits about what happened to this girl. Because this is what we do to ourselves. See, and they tired of the jungle bunnies. Okay, if y'all kill yourself, when we kill ourselves, they fine with it. Okay, we're gonna do less work as possible. And yes, I feel that way. Less work as possible for you jungle bunnies. Alright? Okay, and so that's probably the consensus. Especially when it's something this damn crazy. She pushed herself into a freezer, went into the freezer drunk and closed that big ass heavy door. Yeah, right. And locked herself in. Like she knows her way around the hotel to get to the kitchen and all this kind of shit. If she got in the hotel kitchen in a freezer, somebody put her ass in there. That you already should know. Alright. This Monifa Shelton sent a allegedly, there's a screenshot of her sending a private message that related this message. She said she was tired of all these people blaming her. She said only two boys were supposed to be there. She don't know where the other ones came from. Now this is allegedly supposed to be a private message that she sent to somebody else and now they have submitted this um, text to the property proper authorities. Okay? Um, only two boys were supposed to be there. They set it up. They asked me, did I want to help them kill her? I said yes, because I didn't want them to kill me. That's why I went live. Now, I don't understand why as a group, again, we acting like this is some isolated behavior. Our kids are getting crazy. Mental health in the black community is at an all time high. We got kids eight and nine and 10 years old smoking marijuana, drinking. Their brains are still growing. Your brain grows until you're like 25 years old. So if your brain is, if you eight, nine and 10 years old and you already on heroin, or you shooting up, or you smoking, or you drinking, and your brain cells haven't even fully developed yet. Do you understand what is going on? You're not being nursed or nurtured. You're disconnected from society. You're disconnected from yourselves because social engineering has put us in a situation where we're crazy. Just like the dominant society is crazy. Because you can't put all the stuff that they put on us and not be crazy. So we already know that that's crazy. And we're mimicking the dominant society. We're just as crazy and cra if not crazier. So that's why I talk about the man. I'm not excluding myself. I'm in it with you. I didn't fall from heaven. The difference is I have the courage and I'm bold enough to tell you all y'all got some goddamn issues. The only one I trust is the ones that's working on it. All these people that's running around here thinking that things is okay and the way the society is performing and all, that's just young people. They act like that. And when you sit there and see all this excess and you see your children going crazy will kill another person and obsessed with, obsessed with material things, when you know that your children were carjacked for a car, when you know you know kids like that or young people like that and you still saying kids will be kids, you're part of the problem. And charity begins at home and then it spreads. So if we can't kill 
and clean up this garbage in our own community. And when I say kill, let me make sure I get this correct because I don't want y'all saying I'm advocating for you to go kill them. That's not what I mean. We have to kill this desire in our community that everybody wants to be hard. Nobody wants to show empathy. Nobody wants, and if you don't know what empathy means, it means that you don't have the ability to step outside yourself and get into somebody else's shoes, even if you're mad at them. And then have the ability to get back out and then get back into your own self. You have to have that. That's what makes us human. So if you're my, I'm your friend, and we can go and kick it and go hang out and go to restaurants and go to party together, and then I can let somebody offer me $1,000 to slit your throat, and I don't feel nothing about that because the thousand dollars, shit, I got $1,000. Yeah, you, you know, you, damn, I might can't see you no more. That's going to hurt my feelings, but I'm totally disassociated from that act. Because I take that thousand dollars and oh well, in fact, I'm probably so mentally ill, I'll keep lying and say, I didn't even see you. It didn't even happen. That's what we're dealing with. And we have to kill that energy in our community. We have to kill that energy that would allow somebody to stick up Miss um, Jones and rape her at 72 years old and you know the dudes next door did it but you ain't saying shit because you know the white man is the devil and you know the cops beat us down every day and you know uh, I don't want to talk about black on black shit as long as we got that mentality we gonna stay fucked up we gonna write to our death with this because nobody can't live in hell we are already in hell <laughs> And then you got to live amongst little demons and nobody want to call them out. Nobody want to even say um, there's a problem with our youth. And it's our fault. But they have gone totally awry, totally astray. And either we're going to have to reel them back in. Those that can be. Because everybody ain't going to be saved. The strong will survive, the weak is going to perish. And then there's some of us that we just have to figure out what we're going to do with. Because they're feeding off of us. And they're not a good representation of what black people, African Americans, whatever you call them yourself this month. They're not a good representation of the people of God. That's my two cents on that. To Kanika's mama and family, I want to say I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I wouldn't want to be on the other end of that phone call. And for those of y'all who have daughters, please talk to them about everybody that they think is their friend. Ain't they friend? And if you get a lot of attention and you're kind of cute, you're actually a target for these hateful, Low down bitches. Girls do that kind of shit. They do. The grown girls and the girls who haven't been trained and don't have any kind of guidance, any kind of moral uh, compass, any kind of discipline. Actually, you can't even afford to be around those kind of people. If you a good kid and you don't smoke, you don't drink, you don't do those things, don't hang around with people that do. You will have to probably be by yourself. But it's okay. Because a person that's paving the way to the heavens, they're going to be alone a lot of times. But that's a good thing. Don't let anybody influence you and don't be around people that don't mean you any good. Really evaluate who you call friends. Y'all quick to say my friend, my guy, my guy this and my guy that's okay when you go to jail, um, your guys come and put money on your books, what your guys do. 
or do you call me or do you call your other aunts or do you call your cousins or do you call your uncle who you call because your guys ain't came up and brought you shit The hood is a graveyard, straight up cemetery, full of walking corpses and talk of bitch All right. If you like what you hear, please subscribe. I'll see you next time in the mental health. Bye-bye.